Hello everyone, my name is Sophia. I have always been told that I look a lot like one of the celebrities, more precisely, Ariana Grande. And I was told this every day, often confused, asked for an autograph, and one day I decided to play along with everyone a little, did the same hairstyle, makeup, and showed up to a party. Only I didn't think it would go so wrong. I was kidnapped. Do you want me to tell you what happened next? Then watch and listen. I didn't do anything special for my appearance. I grew up as I grew up, until one day, when we were at an amusement park with my parents, some girl suddenly ran up to me and asked me to give them an autograph and take a couple of pictures. I didn't understand what was going on at all. My parents stood on the sidelines in shock, and I silently signed, took pictures, and then one of them, the smallest one, said to me, I've always dreamed of taking a photo with you, Ariana Grande. You're my favorite. And ran away. Then it dawned on me that I didn't look so much like her. I googled the photo and realized that the similarity is still there. Since then, every time I left the house, it was a nightmare. I was not given a pass, asked questions, took pictures. I was angry when I came home and didn't know what to do. And then I called my friend. Well, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I can't go to the store normally. Everyone's staring. Wear glasses, a hood, caps. Are you serious right now? Even if I shaved my hair off, they would still take me for her. Then turn the situation around. How? Have you forgotten that it's Buck's party tonight? His folks bought him an apartment, and we're going. I definitely won't go there. There will be so many people. I don't want attention. Think big. Yes, speak directly already. Enjoy the popularity. Do you know how fun it is to be popular? Yes, her fans are ready to give her everything, but you refuse to do it. Just have fun and thank nature for giving you the opportunity to live like her. And then I thought, what if it's true? I sat down in front of the mirror, carefully studied the image of Ariana, and turned myself into her. I even had a similar dress in her style. We packed up and went to the party. As soon as I got out of the car, all eyes turned in my direction. And to be honest, my skin crawled. Voices from the crowd. Oh my god, is that her? Yes, it's definitely her. What's she doing here? Bucky, an old friend of Rita's, came up to me, speechless, unable to believe that such a star had come to his party. Hey, Bucky, shut your mouth and wipe your drool. Look who I brought you today. You're so gorgeous. I'm so happy. I can't believe it. Come on. Come on. I just smiled silently, and everyone made way for us and watched us go. After a couple of minutes, a crowd lined up in front of me. Everyone took a photo, wanted an autograph, then began to ask questions. I was confused. Then Rita told everyone that I came here on the condition that I would not be harassed. Have fun as usual. I'm one of you today, I said, and everyone started applauding. They immediately turned on grande songs, started dancing, apparently trying to please me. I just smiled and pretended that everything was as it should be. A couple of hours later, I was on Instagram and TikTok with all the guests. Then I was tired and decided to go outside to breathe. While I was sitting alone in silence, away from all the people, I heard a noise behind me. I didn't turn around and just said, please, no more photos, let's just sit in silence. A voice I didn't recognize said, as you wish. And then they abruptly covered my mouth with a hand and put a bag over my head. I didn't even have time to squeak. I was so scared. I resisted, tried to escape, but I was grabbed and taken to an unknown location. My heart was pounding and I wanted to go home. I was carried to some room, put on a chair, and the bag was removed from my head. The bright light blinded my eyes and I didn't know what was going on. When my mouth was untied, I began to speak. Please don't hurt me. What do you need? Who are you? Why was I brought here? It's all right, Ariana. Relax. Just wait a bit. We'll tell you everything. Please, mister, who are you? Let me go. I didn't do anything wrong. 
I told you to wait. You will be punished for disobedience. My whole body was shaking with fear. I wanted to go home. I wanted to run away. And these people, I couldn't even see them. They just went back and forth and that's it. After a while, one of them in a mask sat down opposite and began to speak. It turned out to be a woman. Baby, it's okay. Just tell us who we can call to demand a ransom for you. We need three million dollars. What? I don't have that kind of money. Let me go. I'm not Ariana. My name is Sophia. I just look like her. My parents are ordinary people, and they're probably looking for me. We have no such money. Let me go, and I won't say anything. Huh. You mean you're an exact copy of Ariana? Then why are you dressed like her? Did you have a costume party? It doesn't look like it. Give me the number, otherwise things will get worse. Out of fear, I gave my mom's number. I didn't know what else to do. They called her in front of me, told her they had Ariana and were demanding a ransom, and my mom thought it was a prank and hung up. She didn't believe it. The bandits were surprised, accused me of giving the wrong number, and grabbed me by the hair. Come on, number! I gave her Rita's phone number. They called her and she understood everything, said that she would find the money now, and then asked to make sure that it was me, and they turned it on a loudspeaker. Hello? Hello? Are you all right? Yes, yes, everything is fine, but they demand the money. Don't worry, everything will be fine. The bandits gave them two hours to bring the money. For me, the time dragged on endlessly. I did not understand what was going to happen. The police could not be called. Rita does not know where I am. Unless... Unless the bandits were guests from the party. I looked up and asked the woman, Mrs. Roster? Mr. Roster? You bought your son a fancy apartment. Which one? Did you say my name? No, we agreed. How the hell does she know us? Quiet, do you hear me? There was a soft knock on the door, and I heard Rita's voice saying that she had brought the money. These two began to panic. It was clear that they had not thought through everything. They were afraid. It helped me relax a little. The woman asked who was there, and Rita gave her name. But when they opened the door, Bucky, their son, was standing in front of them. Mom! Dad! What did you do? The woman took the mask off from her face, hugged her son, began to cry, and asked him to forgive her. She said that they didn't want to, but they bought his apartment on credit and when they saw a celebrity at his party, they decided to make some easy money. I don't know what came over me. Over us. Sorry, son, we didn't mean to. At this time, Rita came in quietly and untied me, and in a couple of seconds, the police appeared. The end of the story was logical. Bucky apologized to me for a long time, but I got off with just a fright. Rita, how did you know? When you went outside, I followed you out and saw you being shoved into Bucky's father's car. Only he has an inscription on all the glass, I love my family. I immediately understood everything and therefore did not panic. And then they called. I told Bucky everything and he knew where they were hiding you. In their offices, here we are. You saved my life, thank you. If it wasn't for my idea to dress you up, nothing would have happened, right? By the way, you better be yourself. This dress doesn't suit you. <laughs> the story ended well, and I completely changed my image and even makeup to somehow differ from Ariana. This lesson was enough for me for the rest of my life. Well, hello everyone. My name is Barbie. Yeah, yeah, don't laugh, but my mom really likes that name. And she called me that for a reason. She wanted me to be born the most beautiful girl in the world. And you know what? I was born the most, only the most, ugliest girl in the world. Now I'll tell you what and how. In the meantime, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and watch on. To begin with, I will tell you about my family. I have beautiful parents. Yes, this is really true. My father and mother are very tall. They are both burning dark with milk, light skin. They both have big eyes, gorgeous hair, a figure, and great taste in clothes and music. By the way, yes, they met at work. Both worked as models for one popular fashion designer at the time. They were leading among all colleagues, so their pair was created quickly and expectedly. My mom's name is Gwen, and my dad's name is Dylan. 
They both built a modeling career, but when it came to retire due to age, they decided to get married, but managed to open their own modeling agency. Business was going well because they managed to make a name for themselves. Their fame went far beyond the country and many girls and boys sought to get into their school to learn and get to the top designers at the most luxury shows and private parties. What can I say? You cannot forbid to live beautifully. And then my mom got pregnant with me. They were expecting a child because they were already ready, because dad and mom had had enough time to travel, make a fortune, accumulate capital, and only the child remained. Mom told me that when they found out they were having a girl, my mom was just overjoyed because she had dreamed that they would have a beauty of a daughter who will conquer the world and will eclipse all the beauty and will tell people whose kid she is. So I will continue to thank my parents and make them even more famous. She and father made repairs at home, lovers of aesthetics did everything to make everything look as beautiful as possible without frills and so that you can take a picture at any time and it was beautiful. And then my birthday came. My mother immediately christened me by the name of Barbie. For some reason, she was sure that I would look like a doll. I would have huge eyes, long eyelashes, plump lips, and to her great regret, I was born red, wrinkled, and dissatisfied. She was even upset for a second, so my father said he was present at the birth, but the doctors calmed her down, said that that's what all children look like after birth. When we were discharged home, I still looked like a boiled cancer. A month passed, two, five, and I still looked like the first day of my life. My hair didn't grow well and I was bald for almost a year. The more I grew up, the more disappointed my mother became. My father reassured her. Like, it's our daughter and all that. The main thing is that our daughter is healthy. My mother also deceived herself, but in the end, the lie made itself felt. The press took pictures and everyone wrote about the ugly duckling. That is, me. My parents were upset about it, even though they didn't show it. I was not taken to more than one celebration. Always left at home with a nanny, I was not shown publicly in the light. Only if by chance someone did notice. I felt all this just did not realize until the end. When I grew up even more and I was 16 years old, we moved to another city. I was sent to a school where I was still the ugliest girl in the class. As soon as they saw me, they all laughed. And when they heard my name, they laughed even harder. Where is it seen that Barbie was full, like me, with narrow eyes, a big nose, thin lips, all closed in on herself, complexed and hunched? And I was just like that. Every day was like a test for me. I hated myself, my reflection in the mirror, my voice, my manners, everything, and I couldn't talk about it with anyone. That's how I lived until I met someone. And so I turned 17. My class and I were going to go to another school for a math competition. I didn't participate. I just had to hold a poster as support. And when I stood in the middle of the hall to pick up the poster, one of the guys from another school pushed me. I fell and the poster broke under me. He shouted loudly that the paper couldn't support my weight and everyone laughed. I cried and ran to the bathroom. I didn't want to live. But suddenly, someone knocked on the booth where I was crying. It was a guy. I shooed him away, reminding him that it was a woman's bathroom, but he didn't leave. I went out to him and he apologized for his classmate. He was a handsome guy with a gorgeous smile. I thought he wanted a laugh. But no, he asked me out. Can you imagine? I couldn't believe it myself, but he actually invited me as a girl and we started dating. Our relationship gave me motivation. I became more confident. I know people said, why did he choose me and what did he find attractive about me? But Sam, that was his name, said that he was happy and interested in me. Even my mother was surprised by our relationship. But the funny thing is, he didn't know who my parents were. This added to my confidence in his sincerity. We had dated for six months. It was a happy time. We walked everywhere, took pictures, he took me to restaurants. We talked for hours on the phone and during walks. Sam was wonderful. And then, unbeknownst to me, he started taking me shopping. I didn't like this business. I could never find my own clothes. But he insisted. He put expensive clothes on me, bought them for me, but I didn't have the courage to wear them. One night before I went to bed, 
I was determined to take care of myself. So I told Sam and he helped me. I went on a diet and started exercising at home. Every time I wanted to give up, he encouraged me. It was important. I lost weight every month and every month we went shopping again, where he showed clearly how much I had changed. After eight months, I went to a beauty salon where I was given a fashionable hairstyle, haircut, coloring, taught to do makeup, and I came out a different person. Looking at myself in the mirror, I realized that I was now living up to my name. That's what faith in a person does. Even my mother couldn't help me as much as Sam. I was happy. I proudly held hands with him and we went to the prom together. I was like a queen, fit, beautiful, and confident. Since then, I've never let anyone trample me in the mud. I realized that if you don't love yourself, how can anyone respect you? Do you guys agree with me? Write your opinion in the comments.